welcome, welcome, welcome. I am your man in Japan, Jay Contra. And I'm here on a bright, warm, hot summer's morning in early July. I'm here in Akihabara. One of my favorite places, if not my favorite place in Japan. I am just outside of Akihabara Station. This is the Electric Town Gate. I would like to use this as an opportunity to take everyone on a bit of a walking tour around the famed electric town. Our objectives are very simple. I'm going to show you my favorite video game haunts, maybe point out a few cool uh, nerdy locations if you want to buy some action figures or whatever. Of course, Akihabara was known for its uh, electric goods and a, a lot of these side streets full of guys who would sell old parts and would sell, you know, uh, like things like capacitors and resistors and, you know, rice cookers. But then within the last 20 years, it kind of switched over to video games. And now that cool Japan happened, we have a lot more anime stuff, which is, well, it is what it is. So our first stop will be Super Potato. I'm going to try and follow the route that I, I follow literally every time I come to Tokyo. <laughs> because Super Potato tends to open at about 10 o'clock. I believe it might be 11 o'clock on weekdays. Um, I'll put a note in the description about when times open. Um, it is almost 10 o'clock now. Akihabara doesn't really open. You'll notice a lot of the shutters are closed on various locations. It's because Akihabara doesn't really open until 10 o'clock. So sometimes you come in, you're going to have the jet lag and you're gonna be up at two o'clock in the morning, but you can't do a whole lot about it because you just gotta kind of wait. <laughs> wait until things open up. Um, I believe Trader's also opens at 10, so if Super Potato doesn't open at 10, you could also hit Trader up first. So we're gonna do, this is the Broad Avenue. This is what I would call the set, the heart of Akihabara. And this actually around, uh, at least on Sunday, it tends to, this whole street tends to close down. But what happened is, it just becomes a walking paradise where you can walk all the way down there, up to the end of that street, down that huge broad avenue. Now the thing about Super Potato is that it's super famous, but it's also in this weird side street and it's really hard to find. It's got a couple of small signs, although it's just a short walk from the train station. You see this, you know, this, uh, the, the Tokyo Radio Department store, this is what Akihabara used to be 20 years ago. It was all about electric parts and getting, uh, you know, washing machines and things like that. But now it's turned into that. I think we're going to try and hit five stores today. Um, if I'm smart, I will also link, <laughs> I will put links to all of the, uh, the videos that I take inside of the stores. That's, see, this is Trader 2. This focuses mostly on newer games, but this is not the trader that I like to go to. Uh, I mean, it's got some good prices, but it's all newer stuff that I don't really, that I don't really much care for. <laughs> now, you notice there's not a lot of people here. That's because it's a working day, so a lot of people are at their jobs. Um, where on Sunday, even at 10 o'clock, there's a lot more people. You get a lot more tourists. And then especially when you get to about 2 o'clock, things really heat up. There's so many people here. You get all of the... Um, all the women trying to get people to come to maid cafes. It's really a sight to behold. But obviously it's really problematic if you're trying to do a walking tour. Um, if you look over there, Kurobukiya, they make some very excellent toys. Um, those, they have some really good model kits. They're the ones who make the, uh, they make the Metal Gear model kits that I love to build. They've also got really cool Star Wars toys. Uh, they are very expensive though. They can get quite pricey. Okay, all right, so we're just about to hit Super Potato. I actually don't even know if we can get that far inside. You see, if you look up there, you'll see the sign for Super Potato. So remember, if you're coming, you can walk down this long side street. This is actually featured um, in Persona 5, this very street. I can't remember what they called as their knockoff Super Potato. But you see, come over here, that Super Potato right there. I mean, we'll actually go in a little bit because it's actually kind of uh, it's actually kind of weird because it looks like you're going into either a haunted house or a murder home. So you come in this this long hallway with some very tiny stairs, but at least you have some signs 
tell, letting you know that you're in the right place. So you walk up here. Super Potato actually has three floors. The, uh, the second floor is the older stuff from, say, Famicom to, I think, N64. That's not even, nope, not that one. So you have to walk up three flights of stairs. Excuse me, I thought it was on the second floor. It's actually on the third floor. It's on the third floor, so you hit these. It's a poster for Iron Commando. They just re-released it a couple, well, like, I think a month ago. So you come here. This is the... This is the older section of Super Potato. And then if you walk upstairs, you can get to the, the newer stuff like PlayStation 2, uh, GameCube, all that, good, just all that good stuff. I guess N64 is upstairs too. It's just, just so much, it's hard to keep track. And then on the top floor of the Super Potato building, they actually have a retro arcade where you'll find some uh, Neo Geo NVS arcade cabinets and a couple of others. I actually don't know if they rotate them out, so I can't tell you what they what they are now. So let's head out here. Next up, we'll go to Mandarake, and then we'll hit Trader. So Mandarake actually opens at 12 o'clock, so I like to save that a bit for last. Trader opens at 10, so Potato opens at either 10 or 11 on the weekdays. So next, okay, well, I can see Mandarake. It's kind of hard to tell. I like to call it the monolith. Let's see what, there's so, oh, there's so much. Lots of anime. Lots of anime stuff. <laughs> this is, there's just so much. I, I actually suffer fits of anxiety when I go into stores like this, just because there's so much stuff, it's hard to keep track. Excuse me if I don't talk for a moment, I'm just gonna try and cross the street and not die. Because <laughs> the thing is, you wanna cross, you wanna cross over into that section over there. And it's a very busy, uh, maybe we'll play it safe. We'll take the, uh, we'll take the main route. Usually on Sundays, it's not heavy traffic. You can pass over that real quick, but uh, I'm gonna take the safe route. Since I don't want this to really be my death video. <laughs> and you can see some maid cafes. I hope I'm not going over things too fast. Oh, something, um, yeah, I guess that sign reminds me is that I do often quote prices for video games after tax. And that makes sense for me because I'm a, I'm a, Jap I'm a Japanese resident. I, uh, I have to pay taxes on everything, but if you're visiting, um, you will actually technically get an 8% discount on everything because you will have, uh, you will not have to pay uh, the uh, sales tax on anything as long as you have your passport with you. Um, that's true of Mandarake. I don't know if Super Potato does it. Um, I know Mandarake definitely does. Uh, Trader does as well. Uh, and I think a few other of the shops that will visit also do it. I'm not really 100% sure of the procedure because I've never done it myself. Actually, you know, usually that that big camera usually has a lot of signs on it. Oh, there we go. Time to move. And there's this huge building that I don't I don't even know what that is. <laughs> oh, it's the, oh, excuse me, it's the uh, the Medusaru. Bell Saul building. It is the, the number one office building in Tokyo, allegedly. But what the hell goes on in there, I don't know. <laughs> Just one of those, you know, weird buildings that's probably got like 10 layers of security that you gotta get through. Alright, so we'll go up to the left and we'll show off Mandarake. Mandarake, I think, has eight floors to it. Um, each one is a particular section, so like the top floor is like, the top floor is toys. The, like the seventh floor is more toys. Um, the sixth floor is where the action is at. That's where you find the video games. So it does have an elevator. Uh, there can be a line to get on the elevator, so you might want to uh, take the stairs if you're uh, young and fit and you can walk up those tiny, tiny stairs. Now it's kind of hard to make out because it's, it's monolithic. It's like, it's just this Oh, I thought it was black. It's more of a very dark green, I suppose. Maybe it's just been bleached by the sun for so long. You see here, this is Mandarake in Akihabara. There's a lot of Mandarakes around. There's actually one at Nakano Broadway, um, probably about 40 minutes from here, that does have some very cool games and very good prices. So you can go in there if you want to find some, some toys, cars. I think I found a $1,000 first edition Charizard in there that was pretty insane so this is the floor guide it's just 
there's so much stuff. There's um, so yeah, toys. Uh, and there's a lot of dojinshi, uh, comic books, and then on the first floor is where you can uh, sell your stuff. And they've also got they just got so much print material. All these old items that I don't even when did these come out? I can't really tell. Lots of old comics. Okay, let's not dawdle. Let's move on. So then you can notice that there's the eagle-eyed viewers will be able to see that there is a Trader Three on the other side of this road. And that's because Trader, there was Trader Two, we just saw that near Super Potato. That's Trader Three. I actually don't think I've ever been in there, but it seems like they've got comic books, um, action figures, and movies. Uh, so I'm not super interested in that. Uh, but we're gonna be heading to Trader One. The, uh, I think, do they call it the Honten? I think it's, uh, you know, the main, the main, the HQ, as I like to call it. It wouldn't be Akihabara if it wasn't for a lot of anime. Akihabara can be quite overwhelming. There's so much stuff going on. And when you're on here, when you're here on the weekends, there's a lot of people that you have to press yourself through. That's why it's nice to do this tour on a weekday. Soft map is a, it's kind of like a Yodobashi camera, although I don't think it's as good. This big blue building that has lots of uh, computers and things, although you're going to be paying Japanese prices on stuff, so I don't know if I'd recommend, necessarily recommend shopping there. You look over there, that's the Akihabara, that's the AKB48, I guess temple, theater, I like to call it a temple. That's where you can go watch Akihabara. I believe they have performances every day. If you notice, I think there are people already lined up to walk out and see it, <laughs> to walk in and see AKB48, although I've never been partial to other songs. So I will have to pass for today, if you will excuse me. Now here we are, this is where the magic happens. This is probably where, if I, if I buy games in Tokyo at all, which is becoming a more rare and rare occurrence, uh, this is where I do it, this is where I come. I come to Trader. Uh, it's on, all the retro games are on the second floor. Unfortunately, we can't go inside because it's not even open yet. So I'm pretty sure it opens at 10 o'clock. I want to say it's at 10 o'clock. That's the front of Trader. All these grates will start opening around 10. You can see here they've got in the basement is where you can uh, sell your games. First floor has games. Um, they're mostly the newer stuff. Xbox One, Xbox 360, PS3. PS4, all of that, and then on the second floor, you will get all kinds of import games. They actually don't have bad prices if you're in Japan and you want physical games. Uh, if you're living in Japan, you can get some import games here. Um, they're actually not going to be that much more expensive than if you bought them new in America, but obviously it's not like Amazon prices. You're going to be paying like $65, you know, $70 for some of these games. And then the second floor is where also the retro games are. That's where I spend most of my time. If you want some anime and you want some uh, other, other DVDs, that's where you go. I think we'll head... Next, we'll try and find Surugaya Specialty Store. Um, that's, it was definitely not as good this year. Uh, so um, this is 2018, if I want, I'm gonna be dating this, uh, this, I guess, vlog is what you can call it. Look at that, look at those lines, oh my God. So in 2018, Surugaya Specialty Store has kind of lost its luster for me. Um, it's gotten a lot of, it's gotten a lot more packed with stuff, but not necessarily good stuff. When they first opened, they had this big, beautiful showcase full of games that were at, I would say, decent prices, but they don't really grade on condition. Um, there's, there wasn't as much stuff there. There wasn't, I wasn't as captivated with Surugaya this year as I have been, at least when the, in the first two years that it, that it, uh, oh, I guess retro game, oh, I guess we missed Dungeon. Uh, all right, we'll head back up there. We'll see, we'll see if I can edit this out or not. But somewhere along here, oh, there it is. So I see a lot of foreigners now going to Retro Game Camp Dungeon. This is, um, I believe, across the street somewhere, there is Retro Game Camp. That is a recent addition to Akihabara. That sells a lot of retro games. And then they opened up a new store called the Retro Camp Dungeon. That's actually beyond this shutter. It is downstairs like a dungeon would be. The only problem is that Retro Game Camp um, at all of its stores, all of the prices are ridiculous. Like I, I can, I can tell you that I saw they had Sengoku Blade, uh, which is a you know a nice Sega Saturn shooter that came out. That's in you can find that at like Mandarake for like uh, like a hundred dollars at Retro Game Camp. It is two hundred dollars. Um, I think they were selling copies of Shenmue 2 when it uh, when the Shenmue 3 was announced. I think they were co selling copies of Shenmue 2 for like 8,000 yen, where other places were selling them for 4,000. They have ridiculous prices on Earthbound. I think they very much are trying to capture that, um, 
they're trying to capture the the tourist market and they uh, they must be doing well because they just opened up a shop in uh, in Los Angeles so there must be a market for it uh, unfortunately it's a lot of people overpaying for games but then again it's an it's Akihabara so you're just gonna be overpaying on games in general unless you can find them out in the boonies let's go here I think I can feel it I, a lot of this is going on instinct <laughs> I'm showing everything off properly. Oh, the G-Store. G-Store's got a lot of anime stuff. I think this has a lot of cosplay. Yes, this has a lot of cosplay accessories, if that's what you're interested in. Of course, if you come to Japan, you're going to want to check out all of the cosplay goods you can pick up. And Surugaya, this is not the Surugaya that we're going to. This is uh, on the first floor. They have a lot of anime stuff. And oh, it opens at 9 o'clock. Hold on, let's see. Let's... So this opens at 9 if you want to look for trading cards. Interesting. Let's see if the uh, let's see if Tsurugaya opens at nine. If their video game store opens at nine, I have to kind of feel my way around this. This is because it's re still relatively new. It's also next to Beep, which is another cool place that I should definitely point out because Beep mostly focuses on uh, arcade games as well as um, really cool. Um, older games like, you know, FM Towns Marty. I think they do have some Famicom stuff though. Famicom, Sega Saturn, Dreamcast. I noticed they had a lot of shooters the last time I went. So we gotta go. Here's a, here's a church. That is indeed a church. Should be around here. Oh, did I miss it? I might have missed it. Oh, it's one of these streets. <laughs> it's one of these. <laughs> Then we get, see, this is less and less Akihabara, there's less anime, so it can definitely not be. <laughs> okay, we might have to skip. <laughs> we might have to skip guy because I can't find it, and I'm not going to be shooting this over again, but at least you get to see the back alleys. This is very, uh, this is very typical of Japan, even though we're in the middle of the uh, nerd epicenter in Tokyo, this is actually more typical, I would say, of a Japanese street, these anime signs notwithstanding, you know, there's, you're gonna, it's so hot, you're gonna, you just gotta have water on you at all times. So I must have turned wrong somewhere, I think we're down the wrong street. Excuse me about this, folks, if we can't find Surugaya, I know this is starting to become useless if you, if you want any, <laughs> if you want to know where you're supposed to go, oh, oh, I'm a, I'm a fool, I went in a circle, and I have found where I'm going, I was, so Sudugaya, the video game area, of course, that is where you can look for the cards. That is where you can look for the cards and the uh, if you want to sell stuff to Sudugaya. I mean, you might actually want to bring over some American games and sell to Sudugaya because depending on how much the, it depends on what their buyback rate is because they have American games selling for ridiculous prices. Here we go. This is the retro game section of Sudugaya. It's just down here, so. If you notice, there's a huge black building there. We were just there a few moments ago. So if you go straight down, that'll be uh, Mandarake. So if you walk straight down, uh, I think Mandarake is on the right. Yeah, Mandarake is on the right. So if you come down this street here. Um, so Beep is a very cool arcade shop. And that's actually there, but it opens at 11 o'clock. It's actually down. You can see the Beep sign here. They focus on very old games as well as arcade boards and cabinets. And they're actually also in a very dungeon-like location down in that basement. Then we go to Sudugaya, which is fine. As I mentioned, it's not as good as it used to be. I'm guessing it opens at 10 o'clock. I thought it would maybe have opened at 9 o'clock. But you walk into this building here. Just look for the blue sign, and then you can tell they have huge boxes. Because what they do, they have these huge boxes full of video games that they source. I guess they're open actually. Okay, well I guess okay. Well I guess if Sudugaya is open at nine o'clock. Yeah, it looks like if you look at this sign, they indeed just opened. They just started opening from nine o'clock. So yeah, actually you may want to start your day out at Sudugaya if you're suffering from the jet lag and waking up super early. Now the reason behind these boxes of video games is what Sudugaya does is it has it sources its stock from collections from people, just normal folks all around Japan and they will ship in their items and have them appraised and they and then they will sell them to Sudugaya often for far less than what they're worth and what Sudugaya will do is it will then send them to their stores that are located all across the country 
and sell them there at not not ridiculous prices but probably slightly elevated and once again condition is often not really a mitigating factor for a price to add Surugaya whereas most like Mandarake if something comes in it comes in as a C grade it can often be you know 75 to 50 percent cheaper than an A grade a copy of the same game uh, assuming it still has all of the same material so we're heading back out to the big street we're now going to hit to friends uh, which I think will be the ending point there's also something I did not get to to show you on this route was the huge book off um, that is really close to the station if you just google book off when you walk out of the station it'll be quite close by um, that's also a great place to look for old games because they have a lot of the staples at decent prices you just got to be careful sometimes it's not always cheapest to book off um, they also have a lot of uh, they have a lot more retro consoles than they used to Moss Burger is an okay place I, I wouldn't recommend eating Moss Burger there's actually a Hardee's or a Carl's Jr. nearby and that's actually where I would go if I was going to uh, eat a burger <laughs> but you didn't come to Japan just to eat a burger did you wow look at oh man look at all these old tiny cameras can you see it over the glare yeah there's lots of really cool old uh, used places that have all kinds of I mean pretty much antiques <laughs> You're not here for watches, I don't think. We're here for the video. Um, we're almost at the last stop on the J Contra Akihabara walking tour. We didn't hit all. We didn't get to hit all of the stores, but we did hit my favorites. So far, let's see. We hit Super Potato. We got Mandaraki. We got Trader. Those are the big three. Sudugaya, fine, perfectly fine establishment. It's a lot more cramped. It feels a lot more cramped now. That's another thing that I, wish, that I should have mentioned. So here we go. This is essentially the end of Electric Town. You notice everything's kind of getting more normal. <laughs> a lot less anime. There's almost no anime to be seen. You see, this is this is this is typical Tokyo. This is, you know, you can go halfway across the city and you'll find just all the streets are pretty much like this, rather than the colorful, anime-infested. Broadway of Akihabara and so friends is just over there I'll take you to the front um, I actually don't know if they're open or not they, they're kind of a mom-and-pop establishment so they may not open until 12 o'clock or so lights about to turn what level well, at least you get some ooh, train models that's what I'm in I want to get some trains and you can get some military models very cool so we're going to go up here and we're going to go to the left. Hopefully not hit anybody or get hit. Light screen, I'm looking around. Excuse me, excuse me if I'm not making the most uh, entertaining commentary. So now, weirdly enough, there is a there is a place called Sega Fredo. I do not believe is it affiliated with Sega. Let's see, here we go. This is Cafe Sega Fredo. Nothing to do with the company, I believe. And then you walk down here, and it's hard to tell. Uh, log over here, and then Friends. Oh, it opens at 11 o'clock. So Friends is in this uh, this here building. I'll try and show you. It's very, it's very nondescript. Got a bunch of bleach signs and a couple of uh, massage places. <laughs> you come in here, and you go up to the second floor. There's actually two floors to Friends. This is very typical, like Japanese uh, multi-story building with very narrow staircases. But they do have elevators, so it could be worse. So you come into Friends. This is the this is the older system room. This is where you'll find Famicom, uh, PC Engine stuff. And then you go upstairs, follow the sign. You'll go up there and you'll hit Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, PlayStation 2, all that good stuff. And then if you want, this uh, this magazine will also tell you a bunch of cool stuff about Akihabara and different shops that you can go to. But I'm about to run out of camera space, so I'm going to call it here. This has been the J Contra walking tour of Akihabara. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you check out my other videos where I actually go inside the stores and show off the games. Let's head out and end in the sun. So this has been J Contra saying thanks for watching. See you next time and mahalo.